Hi there, in this video I'm going to briefly introduce you to C and C++ structures, or structs for short. Structs are constructs within C and C++ that allow you to group related pieces of data together and create a new data type, right? an abstract data type, which is a data type created by the programmer and can be used to model things in real life. For example, if you wanted to create within your programs a data type to represent um, students uh, at a university, for example, right? structs could be something that you use to do that. Right, so probably the easiest thing to do is to show you by example. So let's just create one of these things. Okay, now first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a structure. And structure is like a blueprint. It just demonstrates, well not demonstrates, it, it just serves as the blueprint for this new data type that we're going to create. Right, we're going to create the structure declaration and say, all right, this is the name of this new data type, and these are the types of values that it can hold, right? So let's get started. In order to create one of these things, we're gonna need to use this new keyword, struct, right? Short for structure. And then we're gonna need to name our new data type, our new abstract data type, and you can name it whatever you want, subject to the usual rule, uh, rules of identifiers, right? So in my example at the beginning, I mentioned players for a particular game, right? Or students, students for, uh, students for a particular university, right? So let us create a student data type, okay? So now we have a student data type that has, you know, no values assigned to it yet, or we haven't specified what can be held here yet. So let's do that right now. So let us store the name of a student, right? Anything that is a student is going to have this attribute uh, that we're gonna call name, okay? And then we're gonna have uh, a student ID number, right? Which is an integer, so we'll call that ID. Um, and then we'll have, you know, what their, oh, let's see, what their current average is, right? What their current GPA is. Okay, so I've created the struct and I've got three member variables, right? So any variable of type, of type student will be able to store um, one of these three pieces of data, right? So let's go ahead now and create, right? Or declare, define a variable of type student. Right now, this struct right here, just a blueprint, just a blueprint blueprint for type student okay no memory has been allocated yet this is just saying here's what a student is and here's what it can hold okay so let us then define a variable of type student okay and so i'm going to define a variable of type student just like i would any other variable right whether it was an int a double or a float i'm just going to say student s okay so that creates a variable of type student that can hold a string object, an integer, and a double. Okay, so let me then um, assign values to this structure, to this, this variable of type student, s.name equals Hank. Okay, now I want to assign the student ID number, s.id equals 100. Right. S.GPA equals 3.5, okay, or set to 3.5. So the way that we access the individual values or fields within this new data type is we use the dot operator. If you've done any programming C or C++ at all, you've seen this thing before, right? This is how you can say, all right, let's access the name field that belongs to this variable called S, which is of type student, right? So I've defined in my blueprint right, that we have name, ID, and GPA. I've defined a new student variable called S, and now I'm going to set S's name, ID, and GPA. 
right? So then let us say that I wanted to create a second student, right? Student T, second variable, second set of fields, right? Second set of name, ID, and GPA, completely independent of student S. So I can say S.name equals um, Messiah, right? And I could say S.ID equals 100. And I could say S.GPA equals 3.75, right? So now I have two separate student variables, okay? And not only can I assign values to these variables, but I can also retreat them or retrieve them, excuse me, um, in a similar fashion using the dot operator, right? So let us say that I wanted to uh, display the contents of student S, right? Now, you might be tempted to do something like, like this, right? But you can't because student S is not, it's, it's more like an array than it is a regular old variable, right? You can't just send the name of the, of the student variable to see out it's not gonna it's not gonna work okay so what you need to do instead is have to do it field by field okay oops have to do it field by field so let's say um, oh name s dot name this I can do okay? and then let us also say ID and then s.id, okay, and then gpa, right, s.gpa, okay, and I want to put all these on lines, so let's put the in the L, right, and then the in the L, okay, so this is going to show, show the contents of student s, right, but I also want to see the contents of student T. Okay. So let's do that. Right. So now I have a separate variable T, and I want to see its name, its ID, and its GPA field. Okay. So now if I run this thing, compile and run this thing, what should happen is, is I should see the contents of my student variable named S, and then I should also see the contents of my student variable named T. So let's compile and run this thing, right? So give it a shot. See if I made any mistakes here. Ooh, I did. What did I what did I mess up here? Let's go back and double check. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, here's where I made my mistake right here, right? Um, this should be student T. I want to set T's name, ID, and GPA, not S's name, ID, and GPA. Okay, so fix that, and let's try this again, right? Because what I did with my mistake was, when this was S.name, S.ID, S.GPA, I just overwrote everything instead of the S student variable, right? And so, you know, when I briefly ran that, you know, you might have caught a glimpse of just seeing Messiah and some garbage, right? Well, it's because I overwrote Hank, I overwrote 100, I overwrote 3.5, and then student T didn't have anything assigned to it, so student T just had garbage, right? So now this should fix that. So let's try it one more time, right? Here's our blueprint. Here's us creating a variable of type student and assigning values to each field, right? Here's me creating a variable of type student. It's a second variable, this one named T. Here's me assigning values to all those fields. And then here I'm retrieving those values from those fields and then displaying it on the screen for student S and then similarly for student um, T, all right? So let's try this and see if I have any, any mistakes. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so there is these first three lines. Those are the first three values, or the those are the values for the first student, student S. And then these three values right here, these are the values for student T. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a cut in here and in the video. So in summary, a struct is a construct within C or C++ that allows you to group multiple pieces of data into a single new data type, right? And here I have um, three different types of data that I have put together. 
within this structure. Um, type string, type int, type double. And we can see here that not only can you group different pieces of data together um, or multiple values together, but they don't even have to be the same data type, right? And then when we want to assign values to these fields for each variable of this type, then we just use that dot operator, right? And so here I created two separate variables. And then when we want to retrieve the values from each variable of type student or each variable that's defined by a struct, we just use those dot operators again. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you found this helpful, please feel free to leave comments, uh, give a thumbs up, or subscribe to the channel. Anyway, thanks a lot, and good luck.